All right. I think we're good. Yep, things are looking all right. Cool. Anyway, welcome back to another one of the, these things, just chatting about whatever comes to mind. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Not actually looking for alliterations there, but it, they kind of just happen sometimes. I think my brain just kind of defaults to finding words that start with the same letter as the next word I'm going to say. Um, at any rate, hope you're doing well. Uh, today was okay, actually. Didn't have like a ton of stuff to do. Uh, was busy enough. Had had just enough to keep me keep me preoccupied for the day or occupied for the day. Not sure why I'd say preoccupied. Occupied for the day and not having to like go all over the place. Since I have a lot of writing to do, <clears throat> it's nice not having to to have to like do a bunch of stuff on the same time that I need to do a bunch of writing. Also, one of my uh, assignment uh, things for an interview process I'm doing, or like, how about we just keep doing it on Monday? Uh, that way people can enjoy their weekend. And I'm like, that is fine by me. I already had two things I need to do, writing for the newsletter and New Human Nature. In addition to doing that, it would have been a lot. It would have been, I would have been just writing all weekend instead of, you know, enjoying myself a little bit. So glad that Things kind of opened up a little bit. I have a little breathing room, um, which is nice. Anywho, so yeah, since I've been thinking about writing a lot, uh, I'm going to take a little step away from that here. Um, figured I'd grab another um, Amiibo off the off the board, as it is Friday. Talk about, talk about games for a bit. Um, this one, this time, I could have grabbed... Uh, a bunch of different characters for this one, but I just grabbed Ike here. Uh, hello from the Fire Emblem franchise. That's like the best time it's like actually focused. I think maybe his cape is just getting in the way of my face enough so it's not trying to um, like get stuck on my face or like focus on my face. I also realized that like the thumbnails that I get generated, I can't like put up my own. Um, but the thumbnails I get generated are, <clears throat> even if I do like hold something in front of the screen, I think that that would be, maybe it like finds it because it looks like a face. Maybe it's focusing on it because because of Ike's face. It looks more human than the other things that I picked up. Anyway, speculating there. But I never get recommended a thumbnail for this, even though it's like a position that's like, it's in there for a, for a while. Like it's just still. And I imagine that YouTube would want to uh, give you a thumbnail of like a relatively still shot so it's not like a bunch of motion blur but i move a lot too so like a bunch of the thumbnails that i get suggested are like just like super blurry like my hands are just flying all over the place <clears throat> but i might recognize that as a character is just like we don't want you doing that copyright anywho so fire emblem kind of an interesting thing there um so, as I mentioned, I've been playing games for, like, a really long, most of my life, since I was, like, two. Uh, so, roughly 30 years of my life. Um, that's... I didn't play Fire Emblem until, the, until I had a Game Boy Advance, I believe. Uh, and that was the first time that I had... Uh, I would have had access to a translated Fire Emblem game in North America and the first one I had played was Fire Emblem 7 um, I can't remember if that's Binding Blade or Blazing Blade uh, but it's the one with uh, Lynn, Alleywood, Hector um, as kind of the main the main protagonists and I'm not sure how I got my hands on that game because I never would have gotten it myself probably just one of those things that like a family member was like this looks like you might like it it's a game it can go into the game thing he's got uh but however i ended up getting that i am very grateful for it the like right i don't think i recognized this until probably about high school i think i was playing on a game boy going into a game boy advance in like junior high ish um but it was going into high school that i think i recognized uh, kind of a lesson in storytelling that uh, Fire Emblem games kind of teach. Uh, so for those who aren't super aware, uh, Fire Emblem's a bit 
unique, at least in its uh, in its older games forms. Uh, it had a concept of permadeath in it. When a character dies, they're gone forever. Um, there are some uh, exceptions to that from a story perspective, but they still have like meaningful impacts for if they do fall in combat. Like if you have a very important character in your party that isn't a main character, if a main character dies, you just lose. Um, but if any other character dies, the game continues, they just can't fight anymore. Either they die and that's it, or they get significantly injured and the only time that they show up is in uh, cutscenes uh, throughout the rest of the game. So it gives the player this sense of, I want to protect these characters, at least from my perspective, I never wanted any of the characters to die, even if I don't use them very often. Uh, whenever I saw a new character, I'm like, I gotta try and recruit them, and even if I don't like them, I need them to stay alive until the end. I don't want the character's um, story that they show in the credits to be, they died. Because uh, at the end of Fire Emblem games, they go through all of the characters that you... Um, that you recruited that were in your party by the end of the game or i guess you can call it an army uh by the end of the game um and it uh tells you kind of like what they what they continued on to do uh after the after the war because there's always a war uh in a, in fire emblem games uh, and i never i didn't know that for my first playthrough but even then i still didn't want them to die and i think one of the neat ways that they do that and reinforce that desire to keep your characters alive is in uh, what they call the support system. So when your characters are in combat near each other or like a healer heals one of your uh, one of your characters or a dancer um, dances one of your characters, uh, dancers in these games they're not great at a, they're not great at attacking. I think in the oldest games they couldn't attack and their only purpose was to uh, grant other units another move um, so that's what that's if I say dancers dance or singers sing that's what I that's what I mean uh, for for this game it, it's it means letting one of your other characters take another turn um, by the way it's a turn-based game um, but the support system would also like you don't always get like a reward for doing that but you can see like anytime it does happen like a little heart will appear above the character's heads and you'll know that they did something there was some interaction they were close enough to each other on the map when they were in combat that they had their support rank go up and in between battles when you're uh sort of in menus like preparing for the next battle uh, you can view conversations between the characters that you have in your army. And they do a surprisingly good job of making you care about just about all of the characters. Uh, you kind of want to know how they interact with everybody else. And anytime you get one of those support conversations, it's really hard to suddenly forget that they're a person in your army. They're not expendable. It's hard to let them go and that might be where i ended up not sacrificing anybody for my first ever playthrough of a fire emblem game because i think i would have encountered a support conversation before anybody would have would have died in battle or it could have just been like i was a perfectionist even when i was a kid and everybody had to stay alive because uh that's effectively not completing the game at 100 percent um could be it could be I can't recall if that's how I was when I was first playing Fire Emblem 7. <clears throat> but it was one of those things that I carried with me even beyond uh, even beyond that first Fire Emblem game. Now I've played, I think, I think I've played every Fire Emblem game since Fire Emblem 7. I've played a little bit of Shadow Dragon, and I've played um, Shadows of Valentia. Uh there were a bunch of the first games, like the first six or so games, that I just didn't, 
I don't really I didn't really have the opportunity to play it because they were never translated for, or brought over to brought over North America. You can find emulators for a lot of them now, but uh, I've kind of stopped looking looking into those for for quite a while. I might do that for for some of them, um, just because I, I'm kind of feeling kind of Fire Emblem me lately. But we'll we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> but beyond that. Um, when I was talking with my friends in high school, they had always, or at least one of them, would always recommend Advance Wars for, for like similar reasons. It played a lot like Fire Emblem. It looked really nice. I, like I enjoyed like all the aesthetics and stuff, and like the commanders or the characters. But what made me not really like it as much as Fire Emblem is that the units that you have that you use. Are expendable they don't have faces they're not they're not characters your commanders for each of them are but that's just like like playing magic the gathering and you're the you're the kind of wizard that's like throwing out all of these spells and creatures um, you are the character that's not worth expending it's all of the others that are okay and in this case it's just putting out a bunch of different a uh, bunch of different units, soldiers, tanks, etc., or soldiers or vehicles, etc. Um, but all of them are fine to lose. There's not many ways that I actually haven't checked this. It might be kind of interesting to see if there's a way to play the game and win the game, like legitimately without losing any units. Um, it's definitely not designed to accommodate that, though. You go in there knowing that some of your units are going to be sacrificed so that others can go on and continue. And I didn't like that as much as Fire Emblem. I think what I took away from that series is just how powerful good character design and story arcs can be. And they don't have to be main story arcs, either. They don't have to be the spotlight for the for the game to really shine. You can you can just like a character for kind of who they are and how they interact with one char- with one one of the other characters in the game. You might not like how they interact with somebody, but you just love how they interact with with one of the other characters and that's enough to to invest in them and want to keep going and see how they how they interact with others or definitely get to all, all the way to the end of their uh, support line with um, with the character that you did enjoy. Uh, I think it was kind of fun when I was playing those games just trying to match up the ones that I think would be like really good together. I think it was in later games. It might have been even in those first ones where you reach and uh, there's like uh, C, B, A, and S ranks uh, for these character support um, levels. And that S rank would be a marriage rank essentially that if these two characters can get married, they will get married post-war. And you'll you'll get like text about how they how they live their lives together, as opposed to uh, anybody who didn't get to that. You just get what they did after the war on their own. Um, so there's actually like a lot of different types of quote unquote endings. I feel like I'm quote doing air quotes a lot for this video uh, for going through those. I wouldn't say that super duper increases the replay value. Um, you're basically going through the same game a ton just for like roughly five minute reads essentially uh th- one throughout the game and like to just the last text at the end of the game um still might be might be stuff that people are interested in going through all of that another one of the uh like plus sides to to fire emblem is just you get so many characters that you can use in your party at any time. <clears throat> I guess with like exceptions like the very beginning of the game where it's trying to teach you the ropes and understand kind of how this game is doing a twist on any of the mechanics that are going on. Um, but by the end of the game, even by like the middle of the game, you have entirely too many units to put out on a map at any for any given chapter chapters are how they're typically broken up into um so each each mission is a chapter and you go in there you can bring usually like about 10 10 characters except for like the early ones where you're bringing like between five and eight um but generally the number is 10 for big chapters or big map chapters you can maybe bring like 12 
um, and smaller ones maybe eight but it's usually like 10 is where they're 10 is that average like once you're once you're like in the in the game proper um and you could like in the entire game you could have like between 30 and 50 units that you can use if you wanted to and i think that's a part of the replay value for me it's when i was when i was younger i was all sword masters and sages that is like my entire team i would make nothing but magic users and sword masters i don't know if that says anything about me uh except i maybe wanted to be a magical samurai when i grew up when i was a kid <clears throat> so maybe not a samurai not, not not like the bushido swordsman type but just like the i don't know maybe like the sephiroth kind of thing maybe Maybe it does say something about me. Who knows? All I know is that I don't have long flowing hair or flowing robes. <laughs> so none of that turned out right. Darn. I missed out on my childhood's dream there. Uh, darn genetics. Bring it back to Fire Emblem. Um, I w like, even though I would play that way for a lot of my a lot of my initial playthroughs, I would like to explore some of the other characters in subsequent runs. And like it's just kind of the perfect storm of you have so many characters with slightly different like stat spreads there's also an rpg by the way um where you might have a swordsman who's like really super duper fast but not super duper strong you might have a really tanky um like hero they're not and they have like a ton of attack but they're super duper slow uh you might have uh, a mage that can um, that can just really take a really big magic hit um, but also not be able to deal it out and just or you might just have like the glass cannon type of character which is just super duper super duper strong super duper fast but just can't take a hit and being able to use that and and like just strategize how you want to get through missions based on their just inherent stats and kind of how you want them to play as was was kind of neat it was still limited in early games you couldn't like change who they were or what type of type of weapon they used in more recent games it really just it just becomes a huge you can just do anything you want with these characters they might start with a bow and you can just turn them into a ninja it you don't have to make them a sniper by the end of the by the end of the game. They, they might just be totally, totally different. They might become a mage or something. So in later games, it makes it very easy for you to go back and uh, say like, I I like this character, but I kind of want to try out this other one, and I kind of want to see how not how they work as a as a general, but I want to see how they work as an assassin and the game just gives you a ton of room to just experiment with one how your characters are even if you don't like how the how they're uh classed in like in the game initially it gives you all the power in the world to make them how you want so if you see this character and you think based off of their personality they'd make a really good so and so a really good uh, magic user they don't make sense as a thief then you can uh, change them into whatever you want to match their personality so that you're playing that character in a way that you want to see them unfold it's it's honestly really neat how much they've taken taken that core formula and just ran with it that they make this game where you at least for me for the first time in any game felt an attachment to the characters that i just didn't want to lose usually in games it's like okay cool if i die it's no big deal i'll just restart but with that aspect of permadeath it's you have a bit of stake in that game if you want this character to live you have to take care of them you have to make very careful decisions you can't just go in there uh guns blazing or in this case swords blazing and uh just do whatever you want you might lose a character and if you're like at the beginning of the game you might be playing another 20 chapters without that character in your army that's why every time one of them did die i just have to have to reset start the chapter over again i can't lose them um but that coupled with the support elements of character growth just good character design and character interactions 
it's not a lot that they had to do to really enhance those characters uh, for me. And I imagine it's the same for a lot of people. And with these later iterations, it's easier than ever to just go back and try things. It's so it's so player focused. I think that's kind of kind of the key there. They want you to be invested in these characters and they want you to experience these characters how you want to experience them. It it didn't it's kind of not a huge jump in jump in logic to see why they would allow you to not only change classes up but change classes over in later games because the characters are the core focus you don't like seeing them die you want them to see the best that they can be of themselves and when you're done trying out some of the characters and there were others because there's just so many that you didn't get a chance to try out you'll replay that game and try out the other characters and if there weren't like like say you you're, you're able to take 10 characters with you and there were maybe eight characters that you really liked outside of the 10 that you already played then you could be like well i really liked one of those first 10 as they were but i think they'd be really cool as a pegasus knight this time uh and the game lets you do that it's really it's it really lets the player explore these characters at their own pace and in their own way it's it's really cool in that in that regard which is probably why fire emblem heroes is like the only like mobile game that i can get behind like with those kinds of gotcha games, and to be fair, I haven't spent, I think I've spent maybe $5 total uh, on that game. And there's so much room to just go crazy with, with these kinds of gotcha games. Where you're trying to pull for characters. It was such a smart move for Nintendo to do that. Because Fire Emblem is great. Like, the gameplay is phenomenal. Like, if you really like a turn-based tactical RPG style style combat system, Fire Emblem's amazing. Uh, it's just never gotten it wrong, in my opinion. And Fire Emblem Heroes just took that and put it on a mobile device, and it still played really well. It's a really trimmed-down version of it, but it translated really well. And the minimal gameplay, the minimal gameplay of Fire Emblem kind of plays really well into that, because the real selling point, it it always has been, the characters. So if they can just keep coming up with new characters that you can see in new lights, you can't change them uh, in this game, but they keep coming out with new versions of the same characters, so you get to feel like you've been exploring them the same way. That it just kind of works. A bit of a magic formula there. I think they kind of know, and I think the audience kind of knows, that probably the best part of Fire Emblem is just how cool the characters are and that the player gets to gets to kind of control that a bit and see where they all go and watch them grow. And, yeah, it's just honestly a master class in, like, good good character design and good character interactions. It's It's really good. Anyway, I think I really just kind of mentioned one one Fire Emblem game that I that I played. But yeah, Fire Emblem Seven, Eight, Sacred Stones was really good. Um, Nine and Ten were the ones where Ike is from. That's Radiant, uh, or sorry, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. Um, I kind of forget the order after that. I think it's Awakening, Fates, and uh, Three Houses. And they're all, they just keep getting better and better, frankly, which is really good to see because it was, they had a bit of a rough patch. I think it was Awakening was potentially going to be the last Fire Emblem game that was ever released because the franchise really wasn't picking up with people anymore. And they just let the dev team put everything that they wanted to put into a Fire Emblem game into that, into that game. And I believe that was the first one where you could class over. Like, you didn't just have to class up. I think in Radiant Dawn, they introduced, like, some ridiculous third tier. I'm going to say, it, like, evolution class up. Um, 
ranking for characters. They just made them super, super powered. Um, but you still couldn't, you still couldn't uh, promote to the side. You couldn't become a different class uh, outside of the one that you were already in and being promoted up. Um, and Awakening let players take the characters into their own hands. And honestly, it's like one of the smartest moves they could do. Just because, uh, again, it's the characters drive that. The, the character design, the character stories, just all the interactions between them. Yeah. It was just a really smart move. That's probably what that that's a really good really good case for what probably what probably saved the franchise is just understanding characters is where it was at. Let the players do what they want with the characters. Win. <laughs> anyway. Really fantastic. I'm just going to show you his cape, I guess. Um, really fantastic franchise. If you want to, like, feel attached to the to the units that you're putting out into into combat. Gameplay is always like really solid, and again, story aspects and character interactions are fantastic. If you're interested in that aspect from either a writing or a storytelling or a game design uh, perspective, I would highly recommend uh, going back and giving these games a shot. They are fantastic. Um, but that's probably enough of that for today. Hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.